small coffee, please. Small coffee? That'll be 129. Do you take tooth? Yes, we do. <sighs> Anything under your pillow this morning? Thank you. Hey, y'all. If you didn't know, I made a new account for my music, and all of my previous releases are moving. Link in the description. If you could dig deep into the recesses of your mind and pull out all of the strange oddities and idiosyncrasies that make you, you, to the forefront. Would you be able to distill it down to a few minutes of time in a silly animation or a song? Is it possible to evoke such a range of emotion through such an absurd vessel? Or perhaps that vessel was necessary for you to absorb the message at all? Come a little closer and let me tell you about nonsense. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. Jack Stauber's work has won the hearts of millions and stumped the minds of all who attempt to unravel his enigmas. All minds, of course, except mine. And as we return to the quirky characters, mind-bending visuals, trippy stop-motion, and weird, surreal music, for the third time, I find my brain grows ever more tortured as I toil away, clawing for meaning where often little can be found. Welcome back to How Not to Start a Cult, the only show on YouTube where we definitely, positively, absolutely don't start a cult. If you're watching this, you're at least a little insane for traveling through my first two videos and still choosing to end up here, but that's okay. I kind of think anyone who follows me is a little insane. Since I started covering Stauber's material, there have been a lot of requests for videos and skits I didn't cover previously, and I have been taking notes in my handy-dandy alligator skin notebook. So now we have a whole bunch more Jack Stauber songs and videos to tantalize our senses and make us question reality. And at the end of the video, I have a super huge surprise. Something you have to see to believe. It's my dick. Have you ever felt like a burden to those around you? Like if you can't contribute something, your presence is better off somewhere else? In every video up to this point, I've always tried to start us off with videos and lyrics that were easy to digest with fairly simple meaning. But not this time. We're going in off the deep end with Dead Weight. This is one of my favorite music videos Jack Stauber has ever made. From the distorted animations flashing with the beat, to his oddly proportioned body floating through a void of nothingness. We open on a television set in a room filled with oversized keyboards, then watch as Jack changes the channel. This methodical TV viewing is incredibly important to the themes of the song, as Jack's body hovers and inserts itself into different scenes from shows and movies. It's almost voyeuristic as he watches on and imagines himself in these slice-of-life situations. The people on screen, however, have no depth to them. Their faces are leering masks or smiling plastic. And we see Jack spiral as the thumping synth warmly envelops the listener and drags them downwards. As always, all of my interpretations are just my opinion, but these lyrics seem to paint a fairly clear picture to me. The writer is watching all these experiences unfold on screen, and said experiences are both normalized and romanticized. But he is just not capable of experiencing those things. Having friends, having a partner, just going out, what the hell can he do to fill the pages, meet the strangers, kiss the girl, and take in the world around him? These concepts are so important to him, yet he just can't. Why? This is the irony of being a reserved or introverted person who still longs for connection. I am a person like this, so it resonates with me. I very clearly remember watching Stranger Things when I was like 15 and crying because I wanted what these fictional characters had. I wanted to go explore, I wanted friends to do it with, I wanted to fall in love. I wanted all these things that I would look around and see other kids my age having and it felt like I was being left behind. But it's not just that and this is where it gets significantly darker. Anxiety, numbing depression, and a feeling of worthlessness that really can't can't be defined. This concoction combined creates a paralyzing immobility, and then you are nothing but dead weight. On top of that, for me specifically, connection and affection is very intense and personal. I can't really focus on more than a few people at a time. And that feeling of dead weight returns when it feels like you're the only one who's wired that way. Everyone else gets different needs met by dozens of different people and experiences, and they grow 
outward, where I grow inward. More generally, the song is about fear. That character that appears in his stomach is the sick feeling of butterfly anxiousness that strikes even the strongest down with the paralysis of dead weight. It's guilt and societal pressure to do these romanticized things in a certain amount of time. Otherwise, you missed out and you can never get it back. Things immediately got super depressing, so let's move on to something a little bit more lighthearted. Here's a little ditty about panic attacks and selling your soul to the eternal gods of consumption, where the only full sentence Jack can be heard saying is, I can't seem to breathe or feel anything. A fast-paced and confusing track with a bunch of typical stauberisms, 80s and 90s advertisement graphics, alien vocal stylings, and a ringing phone that calls no one. Basically, we viewers get assaulted by ads for products as Jack tries desperately to say that he can't breathe, but keeps getting cut off. The ads are for products such as Tooth Hammer and Eye Pain. Get Eye Pain for your home today, and we'll throw in a fantastic arrangement of Leave Your House. The most important moment of the song comes. Haha. <laughs> comes. It arrives as a menu list that simply reads, never let yourself feel bad. We can see Jack smoking a pipe at the same time. And this ties into a new theme of Jack's that I didn't really cover in any of my previous analysis videos, that theme being addiction. Haha, <laughs> addiction. In fact, we're going to be learning a lot about addiction in another video hilariously entitled Hope. So we have that to look forward to. We are being sold the concept of escapism and ignoring your problems by forgetting them and training your brain to self-medicate through distraction. As you do so, it slowly becomes evident that you're filling the hole with an assorted consortium of companies and products and brands that are all trying to sell you an easy fix for problems that you'd rather avoid. Eventually, Jack is literally ripping himself apart to try to feel something, and nothing is working because he's numbed himself so much that he's just kind of broken. Oh well, maybe calling 911 will help. Call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. We've got to talk about this, babe. It's becoming a serious problem. Stop. 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 Stop! Why'd you leave her, man? She seemed so good for you. Was there more going on? Yeah. You should have seen her lick her envelopes. <laughs> Before we go any further, can we take a minute to appreciate just how underrated Jack Stauber really is? Like it's some delicious pop food. It should be on the radio. And the vibes of these videos are so addictive and unique. It's as though Vaporwave album covers were real. Two Time is a song about a reluctant relationship our protagonist almost feels pressured into. There's a contradiction between wanting this ideal partner, but not quite knowing how that translates into an actual person just yet. So when the progression into a literal relationship is made, he immediately self-destructs and attempts to find random reasons to dislike his chosen partner. But something bugs me about the way you lick your envelope so In this case, by criticizing her envelope licking skills. Is that innuendo? No. Will I make it innuendo? Absolutely. We are drawn into a push and pull in his mind, where insecurity and self-doubt keep ruining his abilities at maintaining his lover's affection. We could leave the lights on, Jack muses, but then immediately comes up with the excuse of getting suntanned as a rebuttal. There's this inherent fear of intimacy that is forcing him into this internal blame cycle that's incredibly unhealthy. It's a very self-deprecating song, but it actually gets weirder as he starts comparing his behavior to cheating. The definition of two-timing someone is to deceive or be unfaithful to a lover or spouse. But in this case, they're not even together. He desperately wants to remain friends, so he's conforming to the girl's desire for a relationship so as not to lose her. I'm sorry, look at the warmth of this fucking video, man. It makes me think of Sunday school and seeing ads on strange channels when I was in second grade, dipping animal crackers in little plastic cups of water. I was the first kid to start doing that at the church we went to. Then a bunch of other kids copied me. It was hilarious. Remember when I said we were going to talk about fun things? No? Well, this delightful track called Hope is clearly about substance abuse. Yay! But more importantly, you could look at this track as a setup or prequel to Jack Stauber's masterpiece, Opal. We watch as a young girl wanders aimlessly through life, drinking, downing pills, and hoping 
for a better existence. If you know anything about addiction and habit forming, aside from the more obvious elements that dig you down into the hole of dependency, there is another less talked about element that Jack uses to great effect here. Sound. Repetitious movements along with pavloving yourself are a hell of a drug. The perfect drug, one might say. Listen to this. A little chunk of hope keeps me going, keeps me going every day. Just a little chunk of hope. These little noises and the motions associated with them, according to facts and logic, are habit forming and tie into how a person can get addicted. Jack often uses catchy little ASMR sounds in his videos. Now it's just more fucked up than usual. The lady has a baby as the song's lyrics start talking about waiting around for things to change. She's putting all her hopes and dreams into the idea of having a kid, which I could go on and on about how messed up that is. But more important, this could be Claire the protagonist of Opal. Jack often has little references to his own work in his other work, and honestly, this would make a lot of sense to me. Even more importantly, the baby turns into money. What? If you wanted money, you could have simply just not been addicted to pills. Do you know how expensive being addicted is? Here's a thought. Imagine it's not actually Opal's mother, but Claire herself as an adult having fallen into the same patterns of abuse. That'll keep me up tonight. If the main place you listen to Jack's music is his animations on YouTube, I've got some incredible news for you. Nearly all of his songs are extended into full two to three minute tracks, and all of them, every single one that I have heard, is fucking fantastic. I hadn't heard this one in full until scripting this video. And there's one part at the end that feels like crack. I started dancing in my seat. I got up and walked around the room, listened to it like 30 times afterwards. This song is amazing. Anyways, let's talk about the video. Little guy swims through the trees. Multi-armed monstrosity expresses disdain. Food moves on its own. We turn the power on. And what the hell is that? The lyrics here are a lot more abstract. For example, off from my body, suck a load of medicine, slip into a sore and cut my Thomas Edison. You live and you lose, you might find my next star, you know where I are. Then he just starts making noises that could be summoning a demon directly into your ear holes. But I'm going to try to understand this, so let's start with Thomas Edison. Okay, so first off, Thomas Edison didn't actually steal anyone's ideas but many people believe he did and that he took credit for them. When I watch this video and hear these lines about not being ready for something, then backtracking with the sound of cameras flashing, close up and I look so beautiful. It sounds like a problem many artists struggle with, a grappling with fame and coming to terms with the idea that millions of individuals know who you are and have incorporated something that you made into their lives, even if it's just in some small way. When an artist has this realization, it can either humble and inspire them or corrupt and hurt and destroy. For some, fame comes too quick, and instead of staying true to their vision, the artist compromises and allows themselves to be fragmented into a thousand copies then distilled into something easy to understand. I'm saving the most depressing one for last. So instead, here's a super fun one about a guy who works someplace other than Starbucks because Starbucks is sh A little girl approaches the counter to inquire about purchasing a cup of coffee. Does she need it? Is she under control? The man behind the counter looks deader than a doornail as he rings her up and quotes her a price. The girl asks if he takes tooth and he replies, sure, doesn't everyone? She hands him a tooth, then he returns home goes to bed and wakes up in the morning, and the tooth fairy has bequeathed him a shiny gold coin. He then gets up, returns to the counter, and the girl gets her coffee. Simple, right? Wrong! This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull! No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. First off, did the girl stand there all night? What was she doing that whole time? Was the store connected to his home? So many questions, Jack. However, I'm going to propose that very little of this literally happened. The way I see it, the little girl asked the man at the counter if he can take tooth, and he is transported back to when he was a child, hoping for some money for his teeth. Watch his eyes light up for a brief second in childlike wonder as his faith in something absurd 
is rewarded and the magic is retained. A lot of parents describe this phenomenon, but they get to relive small moments from their childhood vicariously through their own kids. And I think that that's why he decides to take Tooth. He wants to keep that spark alive for the innocent little girl the world hasn't crushed yet. Now imagine for a moment that it was a much older person trying to sell their dentures for free coffee. On we go! This one is a wholesome skit. I'm serious this time. This actually is a wholesome skit about a father and his son finding meaning in hot dogs. Now you may be wondering, Daniel, what are you talking about? But before I can get into it, I have a larger point to make. Jack Stauber is so fucking good at writing realistic, casual dialogue. The exchanges between people have awkward pauses, they interrupt each other, but at the same time, it's still a romantic portrayal of speech and conversation where everything flows together. Even awkward pauses become comedic timing in Jack Stauber's perfect world of imperfection. It reminds me of the writing in 8th grade, powerful movie by Bo Burnham by the way, and the characters' interactions in it are super awkward. But the main difference is, Jack's work still feels removed from reality. In a good way. You know, because reality sucks and is stupid. A father is hanging out with his baby, and cannot seem to hold in all the knowledge he wants to impart on the child. They discuss various topics, and the dad tells his son that one day he'll be super smart and become a scientist. And it's interesting how excited the dad is to hang out with his kid. And when he reaches a gap in his knowledge, he easily switches to complimenting the child and telling him how smart and cool he is. Suddenly the dad sees a hot dog cooker, the kind you see at gas stations, tossed in a garbage pile by the side of the road. He asks why anyone would throw something like that away and then takes it. This part is a little sad because I know what it means. You know, like if you've ever been in a situation like this where you needed to get some food item off the side of the road, then you know what that feels like. But what's so cool is that the dad doesn't seem to mind. He looks on the bright side and just keeps moving along. They head to the store to get some dogs from the pound. Ha 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 ha. The dad jokes multiply as they wait in line. They sit down in the yard and he attempts to cook some dogs. However, there's a little problem. The cooker is broken. They sit in relative silence which is broken only by the dad telling his son that he loves him. It's so happy. It's possible they're sitting outside the house because the dad lost his keys, or maybe that's not even their house, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is the genuine love and affection between a parent and their child. Uncompromised, unconditional, and beautiful. Okay, this is the end, so let's get real for a minute. Dinner is not over has one of the most effective anti- offing yourself messages in any song, simply because it doesn't sugarcoat a thing. Jack doesn't live in a cotton candy house. He knows about life and its disappointments and tragedy, and he acknowledges them. You'll see what I mean. We are shown an assortment of food dancing merrily by as the lyrics, dinner is not over, repeats. However, hidden with the meals, we can see a human heart, a skull here, and other references to rot, death, and decay. Jack goes on to compare the foods to life experiences such as friendship and love. Then he says that he's tasted dying, and it tasted good. The ideation was positive, and he wants that sweet release. But, but death is dessert, and you can have it when your dinner is done. He admits the appeal of death, but goes on to suggest that, hey, it's still gonna be there. Death comes for everyone. The chances of you existing at all were pretty slim. And now you have a chance to roll the dice on life. Maybe right now you're eating from a seemingly gigantic, insurmountable plate of soggy animal crackers, but eventually you could get to something better. The song continues. We watch a lollipop turn into a noose. Just fun times all around. It's for when life sucks and you want to hang yourself. We get to see Jack eat his own brain like an even more demented salad fingers. Look at how weirdly wet the tongues are. I like my tongue dry. That's a new sentence. As someone who overshares on the internet, seriously, why do I keep doing this in literally every script I write? As someone who has struggled with ideation before, I find this to be some of the most comforting and profound ideas that Jack has ever expressed in his work. Material like this really helps people. And I'm glad that I live 
at the time when this art is being made. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. I recently joined OnlyFans and saw that you had an account. That kind of shocked me. Well, why, why did you make an account? I made it for you. Oh, maybe we should collaborate sometime? I try to, I try to, I try to um, push the boundaries of my physical form. So if I needed a stuntman? Backflips, frontflips. Do you find that medicinal helps? When I'm, when I'm on a bend, when I'm on, when, I'm, when I'm on one of my bends of stunt doing. What do you recommend for people who might want to follow in your footsteps for the OnlyFans content? You remember when you're making music and doing stunts is to drink just a lot of water. I've watched some of these stunts. How do you not get hurt? I think that's a fundamental part of life is just to get hurt. I mean, like, you know, you can only get feel better after you get hurt. What do you get out of doing these stunts? It's like a language that people speak. It's something that people know how to say. Like, it's a way to communicate with people that, that you wouldn't be able to communicate with throughout, like, a different format. Over the pandemic, I started growing my hair out. It's gotten quite uncontrollable lately, but when did you start grow growing your hair? And I grow my hair out, and I throw my glasses out, I try to keep everything, you know, behind kind of a bit of a mask i guess um and the only way to truly find out who i am is by uh listening wow to pop wow now wow well i just realized that i used up all of our time here tonight we didn't even get to any of the real questions like what's your favorite movie like i see the movie but i don't know what it's called okay jack thanks for joining me excuse me sir uh i gotta plug this i gotta plug this cd plug 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 Jack Stauber is an artist's artist with an uncompromised vision, a fan base that analyzes his enigmatic work even after over a year of apparent hiatus, and the ability to tap into the worst fears and nightmares of the general public. What more could you want? Each like on this video equals one cooked hot dog for the baby. And if we can get to 1,000 likes on this video, I'll make another in this series. Do it, do it, so I can make more stunts. And be sure to tune in next week when I will be slow dancing in a liminal space with my entire audience. Bye! From the 31st floor of the simulation swarm With a drone of fluorescence, flicker fever fill the form With a warm gush, now I wanna touch like we never could before I'll fly to you tomorrow, I'm not fighting in this war.